Hello and welcome to the Butter White uh, YouTube thing. We're filming this in front of a live YouTube audience. And on this episode, we've got a few CNC related topics to talk about, right? Uh, we Uncle do, Brian? Tubby. What's, uh, what's leading us off? This is, uh, this is our friend, uh, our friend Alex recently got a, uh, a Carbide 3D Nomad, the new Nomad 3 that just came out a few few months ago. And me and Brian here, what are, we went yeah. over to his house a couple Is of weeks it? ago. We're all vaccinated. It's so exciting. We got to go to Alex's house, and we helped him film an unboxing video of this Nomad 3. And I'm going to hit play over here. It's just uh, this is uh, cutting the test project that comes with the, the Nomad. The, Brian, can I ask you sure. what the Nomad is? Why, is it, why would you get a Nomad? You, yeah, I have a Shapeoko. It's a giant CNC, but this Nomad is like the size. It's, it's bigger than a bread box, but not yeah, much not, bigger. I don't remember the dimensions, but it's, uh, I don't want to say consumer grade, maybe prosumer, but like if you were curious about getting into CNC, this was, this is designed it's right up your alley. This is kind of what, what Carbide wants to sell to you. Um, literally the unboxing, you know, we did it on a Friday night and I kind of, I was kind of prepared for it to be a lengthy night, you know, that we were going to be tinkering and messing with things. <laughs> but I mean, it was, Six zip ties. Am I remember that correctly? We lifted it. The hardest. Yeah, six zip ties and three. The pieces hardest part of foam. about it was getting it out of the box. But yeah, three pieces of foam. Six. Why was it difficult to get it out of the box? Well, Tubby, because Alex and I are not physically strong. We are weak people. No, it, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's, it's about a, eighty pounds. It's, it's a, a bulky. Brick. It's a bulky thing, and it's. It's. I don't want to say expensive, but it costs two thousand eight hundred dollars, right? Am I so yeah. you know it's that's about that eighty dollars right. and expensive enough that we don't we, want to drop we it. We have ESP. Frank Paul in the chat just asked us that's how much amazing. these cost. I we did we're doing you're doing a good job, Brian. So yeah, a combination of eight This costs more than my giant yes. Shapoko outside. But your giant Shapoko also needed a router, right? I mean there's but no, well, I went, oh, it, that was I paid about twenty one hundred dollars okay. okay. with the router. The, the prices have gone up, but on the Shape Oko, but they've been improving the Shape Oko too. So it's not. But I had to spend an entire Saturday assembling yeah. my Shape Oko, whereas this was just like my Prusa Mark III fully assembled kit. With the Prusa Mark III, I opened the box, lifted the printer up, which was easier because the three D printer does not weigh very much. I probably cut three or four, five zip ties, and I was printing a test job within 15 minutes of bringing the box in from outside. Oh my God, you're in that video. I am, in, oh my <laughs> gosh, and I'm excited about hitting the power button. But this is a very different, my Shapeoko is a big 32 by 32 inch, you know, like the two and a half feet by two and a half feet, give or take three or four inches of vertical. And this is only eight inches square. But this has more precision than my Shapeoko has. You could put a, this will do a better job on little pieces of aluminum or brass. And you can use the tiniest end mills on this and engrave tiny little, like you might engrave PCBs with this. And I'd, I would not be able to engrave a very fine pitch PCB with the Shapeoko. But I think it's amazing that you could spend. I know it's a, it's it is yep. a lot of money. It's a good value for what it is. But you could spend three thousand dollars. A few days later, a machine shows up, and you could be cutting. Yeah. The, you know, for a lot of us, the machine is half. Yeah. The work. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know about you, but what's a what's a weekend assembling something in your garage worth from a I guess a dollars and cents perspective? How much would you? How much extra would you have paid? Yeah, but for some people, yeah. it's a lot of fun. But 
And I, I guarantee you Carbide 3D would have a Shape Oko fully assembled kit if there was a way to ship something that was four feet by four feet yeah. by a foot tall. Well, I mean, there there's a way, but it's, it's expensive. Is, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's way too expensive. Yeah. But our friend Alex, that I'm doing, going out of order here because before, he's been getting... Alex has been into 3D printing with us for, you know, four or five years already. But he's just gotten into CNCs. And before he bought the carbide machine, he bought the super budget style machine that's... I don't want to say it's comparable to the Nomad because the Nomad is a well-made... It's worth every penny for what you get. But Alex bought one of these 3018 machines, yep. which is 300 millimeters by 180 millimeters on that cutting surface. It has a really cheap tool. The uh, stepper motors are tiny. Those, uh, those rails here that it rides on are the same grade as in a 3D printer. You're not going to cut... I mean, you could cut aluminum if you go slow and you melt it and you make it all gummy and you don't want to do it. But when Alex was doing the 3018 stuff, he got he bought a copy of uh, MeshCam, which is a 3D uh, cam software. Cam software is, if you're into 3D printing, it's like a slicer. And normally, like the cam that comes with the Shape Oko, it's basically two and a half dimensions you and it's most cam is pretty manual you go in you pick which which lines you want to cut inside of outside of and how deep you want to go into the material so you you get usually two and a half okay. dimensions but this he took an stl file of this uh lion coin thing he had to squish it down a bit it was very tall and he made it flatter but but that's fine and this is with the you run through it with a ball end mill and it just goes back and forth, overlapping itself over and over again until you get roughly the shape you're looking for. And I think that one, he didn't even use a ball end mill for the one in the picture. A ball end mill would be nicer. This is just a cheap, ball end mills are cheap too, but he used a plain flat end mill like most of us would be used to. But he did a fantastic job. He put a uh, He put together a tutorial on how to do your first mesh cam project up on youtube and you guys should totally check it out if yep. you're interested in and this we'll, uh, stuff. we'll put links to alex's videos and his channel in the video description absolutely we will does he have a machining oh just a time lapse i like time lapses why is it so dark why is this time lapse know. dark did i make the whole video dark or something nope it's just the time lapse Oh, it's behind a piece of oh, plastic. Okay. He's opening and shutting. Oh, he must be. You had to check yeah. on it every now and then when it gets bright. That's or, fun. I know it's out, it was out in his garage. I wonder if he's turning his garage light out. Or, uh, yeah, you think, but Alex is a smart video guy. Yeah, He'd have yeah he would. He's, got, he's got great big lights that made Pat beautiful in that video. I've never been that beautiful never, before. Never that, be never, never that beautiful. And I don't know if this one's CNC, Brian. This is our friend Jeremy Cook from the Creativity Podcast. Yeah, it is. Has this... Uh, this is cut on his laser oh, cutter. Okay, that makes... And I'm going to paraphrase what he explained in the video, if that's okay. He wanted a thing to hang his camera to be able to adjust his camera at his workbench. And he made, like, two segments. And then he realized... Well, I already have the files. Why not just put segment after segment after segment? And he made a a longer arm here out of uh, you know thin plywood yeah. sheet and a three D printed piece, right? And a three D printed piece to mount the uh, for the tripod yeah. mount. He's got a little ball ball screw tripod head there. Oh. I did had it, that problem. Did it almost fall my, off? My camera wanted to. It wanted just, to. Well, it didn't almost. It undid its thread and yeah. wanted to go. But I think this is fantastic. See some of the pieces here. Lasering would be exciting to watch, right? Exciting? I don't know. It's if it's exciting. exciting. It's a time lapse. 
But me and Jeremy have been talking about this a lot. The cool thing about 3D printing or laser cutting or CNC is that if you need to make more of the same thing, you just put more material in and say, give me, give me another one, yep. give me another one, give me another one, whatever will fit. And he didn't cut quite deep enough here. He came close. We're being quiet. We are. And it's, it's fascinating. He did a good job. He did do a good job. And I know this is when he learned he needed to clean the lenses in his... Uh, in the laser? In his, his uh, big red Chinese yeah. laser cutter. Yeah, and he yeah, just posted in his uh, Laser Cook YouTube channel a link to a tool he designed or printed to re to remove the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. To take out the mirrors. Yeah. Jeremy's doing a good job with his laser. Tell him everybody be sure to tell him I said so. Or no, don't tell him I said so. You guys tell him he's doing a good job. So he you know, he feels like more people than think just he's me doing a good job. Think he's doing a good job. And I'm excited about this. I'm tempted to order one of these. What is it? This is a a bit setter is what they usually call this. At least in uh, in Alex's Nomad, there's a little button where the tool drops down. Every time you change the tool, it might be a different yeah. length. So you can't just switch from a roughing end mill. Like you could put a quarter inch end mill in, hog out a bunch of material, and then go back with a smaller end mill to do the fine work. But if you don't get that height, re-zero re your Z-axis just right. That second pass, you might cut too high, you might cut too low and ruin things. It's it's a nightmare. This is for the Shape Oko, and Carbide sells a very similar probe, but it costs about twice as much. So I thought maybe it'd be fun to try this one that's only $65 from Etsy here. That is... Does he have a video of it in action, I bet you? I would hope so. Oh, I see the shadow moving. Yeah, here comes the end mill. It comes in real slow, pushes the button. And then comes in even slower to to really get that that correct height. But for me, I have to if I change an end mill, I have to bring my bit back down to the material, slide a little piece of paper under there to check like my leveling the manually level. My Z head. It is so much like leveling your three D printer. But you can't always do it. Like if you were cutting Alex's lion. Uh, coin. lion all the surfaces that you can measure your original Z height off, yeah. they're all gone. Maybe. They might all be gone. Yeah, so maybe I'll have one of those in a next for next month's uh, podcast to let you guys know you how should, that works you out. You should post a video to Facebook or YouTube about it. Sorry, YouTube. Oh, what was the size again? On the, no, I'm happy to answer your question, Frank. It's fine. The, the, uh, the Nomad... The Nomad has a cutting area of eight inches by eight inches with a Z axis, a height of three inches. It's very, it's, it's what you do a very different kind of work in a Nomad than you would on my shape vocal. It's, whoa, look, Chris is helping us. Holy moly, she's pasting specifications. That's I amazing, can't believe Chris. It. You're doing an awesome job. The cutting surface is eight by eight by eight, but the machine is probably more like, you know, Two, almost two feet wide, two feet deep, and two feet high. Does that seem about right, Brian? Oh, Chris says so. 18 by 19 by... It's about an 18-inch cube, we're going to call it. I know they're. it's a little off from that. But the Shape Oak goes 40-some-odd inches wide and deep for the, the big model. With the Shape Oko, you mostly would work on wood. You'd put a slab of, con of uh, concrete. concrete. What? Could you machine concrete? No, plywood. You'd put a big piece of plywood in there and maybe make signs or I don't know. I mostly you. I mostly machine carbon fiber for FPV quadcopter frames. Oh yeah, there's another another shot. But it depends on what kind of work you're doing. Which of those machines you would want to. Uh, to acquire. Yeah, and what are the chances if you're a real CNC enthusiast that you have both? Yeah. Both. I've been tempted to get a Nomad. I haven't figured out yeah. what I want to do with one. One of the other big differences is the Nomad is so quiet. I mean, it's not 3D yeah. printer quiet, but you spin that router up and turn on the vacuum on my machine and you want hearing protection on. But the Nomad, we ran it in Alex's yeah, kitchen, it wasn't awful. And we could have a conversation. Yeah, it, was, it was noisy, yeah. but not to the point where we couldn't understand each other. We'd be hollering if we were standing that close to my shape, Boko, in the... Huh? 
Huh? Huh? But I think that about wraps up our episode, Tubby. This is true. Well, we're going to do it in two weeks. Two weeks. Should we? Should we announce? Now, see, I disagree with you and 3D We Be that we should do an introduction. But I'm wondering if we should do an outro to put on the four of these potential videos. Like we do the live stream every uh, every other every first Tuesday or something. Hmm. I don't. Need, we don't. I don't even think we have to do it for this set of yeah. Videos. I'm not too. It's not about it. it. But this. It's not a bad idea to routinely. Yeah. Say hey. Yeah, just routinely at the end of every episode, say we do this we, every first Tuesday of the, of month. the month, and make sure to like and subscribe. Yeah, make sure to click like the notification subscribe. bell. All those things smash, that go in this smash outro. Smash that stuff. And you know I'm going to use this as our outro. Oh, I hope that you do for all these videos. This this nonsense Patri- that we're speaking Patreon. Right now. We each have Patreon. Patri- Patreon. We do each have Patreon, and the URLs for those will be in the description. And if we were good at this, I would explain to you why it's a good idea to support us on Patreon. But I did not prepare for that, guys. So I'm I have to apologize for that. You you too might want a butt sensor for your home automation, and your your contributions on Patreon are a huge reason why we're able to to make butt sensors. It's true. I could not have made a butt sensor without the support of my patrons. And I'm not even 